Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus which are contained in the Gospels. And this week, the parable of the two sons, which is found in the Gospel of Matthew. It's a short parable which draws attention to a very important distinction. So let's take a look. But what think you? A certain man had two sons, and coming to the first, he said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. Matthew 21:28. We learn right away that the man in the middle of this parable is both a father of two and the owner of land on which he has a vineyard. It's unknown how much land he owns, how big the vineyard is, or how many other workers he has for the vineyard, but he probably relies on his sons to help him with at least some of the work on a regular basis. This command doesn't seem isolated. And he answering said, I will not. But afterwards, being moved with repentance, he went. Matthew twenty-one twenty-nine. The first son has no intention of doing the vineyard work that his father wanted him to do. His motives for this are unclear from the way he phrases his rejection. Perhaps he feels that there is something else he should be using his time for, something more important to him. Or he may just be irritated at his father for some reason. Whatever the case, he eventually decides that despite his misgivings, he really should do his best to help his father, and he goes out to do the work. And coming to the other, he said in like manner, and he answering said, I go, sir. And he went not. Matthew twenty one thirty. The absence of information as to motives continues in this verse. It doesn't even say that he decided not to go, just that he didn't go. For all we know, he could have planned to leave, but gotten distracted by something and forgotten the job until it was too late. Still, he should have made it a priority, since it was something he'd promised to do. Which of the two did the father's will? They said to him, The first. Matthew twenty one thirty one a The reality is that while many of us may have motives and intentions that go against the will of God, what really matters in the end is what we choose to do. The Pharisees were right to say that the first son, who chose correctly, despite not wanting to, was the one who did the will of his father, because we don't need to conform our feelings to the will of God, only our choices. That's the means by which we keep ourselves from sin and do good deeds for others. That's the important thing, regardless of how we may feel about it. Jesus saith to them, Amen, I say to you, that the publicans and the harlots shall go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of justice, and you did not believe him. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. But you, seeing it, did not even afterwards repent that you might believe him. Matthew 21, 31b-32 Jesus is referring here to John the Baptist, who called many rich people, including Herod and the Pharisees, to repent of their sins and do the authentic will of God. The general public, including tax collectors and prostitutes, recognized John correctly as a prophet and repented. But even when the public recognized his prophetic voice, the Pharisees stubbornly refused to acknowledge him. In fact, for the most part, their concern seemed to be with how to avoid acknowledging John's message on the one hand, while also not upsetting the people who recognized him as a prophet of God. That's not holiness, it's public relations. And any leader in any church who thinks like that should be ashamed of themselves. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? But they thought within themselves, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of men... The whole people will stone us, for they are persuaded that John was a prophet. Luke 20, 4-6 This is the reaction of people who are only concerned with the response of their fellow man, people who either don't believe they will be called by God to account for what they say and do, or else just don't think about it often, because they're out of practice due to being distracted by worldly affairs. Jesus is, of course, right to criticize them for their terrible unwillingness to accept the messages that God has sent them, and faithful people who criticize those in modern church leadership, who also concern themselves only with worldly affairs, are every bit as right. No one ever got into heaven by being an effective diplomat or a profitable administrator. Next, the wedding feast. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.